Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to Board Games, Bricks and Hobbies. I've been reviewing these three LEGO UFO sets from 1977. I've already reviewed these two, which leaves the last one here, the flagship, the Interstellar Starfighter. Alright, so this is the moment I'm sure many of you have been waiting for. This is the Interstellar Starfighter. It is the largest set and the flagship of the UFO line, uh, although that's kind of debatable, which we will get into later on in the review. Uh, but first, I just wanted to go over the aesthetics and the build uh, parts, things like that. Uh, now, this set reminds me a lot of the Starship Enterprise, specifically this section up here. Uh, getting Definitely getting Star Trek vibes from this. Uh, we've also got kind of a little bit of X-Wing going on in the back. And then, I, again, just the general size and shape uh, is very Enterprise. Uh, and that's a good thing, in my opinion. Now, going on to the parts, uh, I actually didn't know that these large dishes were a separate part. I had always just assumed that this was just more of the smaller dishes um, because these are the only parts I've ever actually had in my collection. Uh, but it turns out that these dishes up front are actually larger uh, and they only appeared in three sets. Uh, this one, another UFO set, and the original Millennium Falcon. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They are very large and that leads to a terrible price for part uh, ratio, which uh, we'll also get into a bit later. Um, yeah, so the build was fairly straightforward. Uh, this is 1997 again, so it's mostly studs up construction. Um, in fact, it's kind of all studs up construction, uh, except for maybe the, uh, the engine back there. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but yeah, it just means that you're not going to find anything groundbreaking in it. Uh, it's all fairly standard uh, build stuff. Now let's go ahead and get into the play value. And yes, I'm an adult talking about the play value of a toy from 1997. Um, most people that buy this are probably not going to just hand it to their eight-year-old, uh, but hey, uh, it's a toy, and so that's actually important, right? Um, and so you've got your canopy here. Uh, you've got seating for two figures. We'll look at those uh, in a little bit. Uh, right here, you've got another canopy uh, with another figure, like so. And then one of its main features here is you have the ability to split this section of the ship off into this smaller UFO. It almost looks like a um, manta ray. Flies around like that. And it doesn't look terrible with that taken off. I feel like it's it could have looked worse, uh, but it still manages to look okay without that on there. And then from here, you can see, get a better look at the core play feature, which is this uh, fiber optic electronic component in the middle here. Now, to activate that, there's a battery box in here. Uh, you press this down and it lights it up. Uh, now, mine is a little bit broken. Uh, it's also supposed to have some lights in here, uh, but I can't get those to work, unfortunately. And this was actually supposed to rotate and spin. Uh, so this fiber optic element was supposed to alternate and look like kind of a, a core revving up, if you will. Uh, but these red motors in here, uh, apparently they are notorious for their failure. And mine has obviously failed. And to get a new one, it costs you about a third the cost of the set. Uh, so not really worth it for me to hunt that down. Uh, but yeah, just uh, be aware of that if you're trying to buy this set secondhand. Uh, if you care about this function, uh, be sure to check with the buyer. Uh, whether or not the motor is working. Uh, the seller that sold me this knew that it was broken, uh, so we were on the same page, but just something to be aware of. Uh, what that would have looked like here is I, I can just force it around here, and you can see 
as I rotate this, uh, the direction of the light is sent through a different tube. Um, so in its original form, this would have been entirely automated and it would have just kind of spun around when you turned it on. Um, and there is that. Uh, yeah, so the last thing in regards to play value, I guess, would be swooshability, right? Uh, because it's a spaceship and swooshability is important. Um, sorry, I have no idea what that was. Weird neighbors doing stuff. Anyway, um, so I found that the best place to pick it up is right here. And it works. Um, it's not really that great. Uh, it's kind of gets a bit wide here. So if you have small hands, it's going to be pretty hard to hang on to this uh, with one hand. Uh, I try to avoid grabbing it from here uh, you, because that you can see just how that starts warping the, the dishes there. And I wouldn't want to risk damaging or bending those uh, parts there. So definitely avoid grabbing it from uh, around there. It just makes it so that there's less less space to really grab this from. I've also found that the um, landing gear can be a little fragile. Uh, it's not collapsible or anything, uh, but it can definitely fall off just like that. Um, yeah, and I think that just about covers the play features. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the figures. Now, I'm not going to go really in-depth on these uh, because there are plenty of places that show you high-res photos of figures and sets, and I feel like they do a lot much better job at that. Um, so let's have a quick look at these. Here uh, you have a red alien, a red android, and a black alien, which I guess is supposed to be kind of a leader of sorts. Uh, they all have got a bit of metallic printing, so you can see just that, that shine to them. Uh, and I think it's very well done, especially uh, given its age. Uh, the no back printing, which is par for the course at the time with Lego. I also really like the design of these helmets here. Uh, you can see it's almost got like a brain design going on there, um, which you can also see that uh, represented on the dishes right here. It's almost as if um, the figures don't really need to drive. They just hook their hook their neurotransmitters up to the vehicle and, and control it that way. I'm not really sure what the canon is for that, uh, but I feel like that's what I am imagining. Uh, you get a bin in here, uh, which doesn't hold anything. Uh, it seems weird that they included that, but didn't put anything, give you anything to put in it and you've got controls. But if they control everything with their mind, why do they need physical controls? Yes, I know the whole one person that cares about my headcanon is, uh, is thrilled about what I'm saying. Okay, so moving on, we've covered the play features and just the aesthetics of the set, which leaves us with one last thing, which is the value. Now, value on old, Retired sets can be tricky because you have to consider the original price, inflation, uh, and also just what the current market rate is. Uh, and that's a lot of stuff to consider. Uh, now, originally in 1997, this set cost 80 United States dollars, which is too much. Um, now, I know that a lot of sets then and even sets now have a different price to part ratios and you should be looking at kind of just more of the general value that the set offers, not strictly the price for part ratio, although that's a good base to go off of. Uh, but in this case, I don't really think the value was there. And I'll explain why. This set has 292 pieces. Uh, and the next smallest set, I say smallest because it's actually larger, it has more pieces. The Alien Avenger, which was essentially a giant so flying saucer, that set has 369 pieces. So almost 75 more pieces than this. And that set retailed for 60 United States dollars, $20 less than this. And it, 
And this set really just doesn't have a lot of play features. Uh, the bulk of this middle section here is dedicated to this mechanism, uh, which uh, even if mine had worked, uh, it's still kind of a gimmick, honestly. Um, and the yeah, the magnet spaceship is cool, uh, but there's really nothing else. A lot of the other space flagships uh, kind of in classic space had uh, they had little scooters that could detach. They had small rovers that would uh, kind of go in a cargo compartment. Uh, this set has none of that. Uh, it's got this, and, and that's about it. Uh, so, again, it's, got, it's even got this, uh, this compartment in here, but nothing to put in it. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, I guess it's got a sticker here. There's only one sticker in the set, uh, which is great. Everything you see is a print except this. It's a heat sensitive sticker, but again, that, that's kind of just a gimmick. Um, and I really wish that this set had more play value, that it had kind of a, a detachable ship, maybe even made this front half, entire front half detachable. That would have been cool, um, but it, it just doesn't have that. Um, so, especially given the cost, uh, just about 300 pieces. Uh, for $80 at the time, I don't think it's worth it. And in today's world, um, I don't know if this is worth it for the secondhand prices, uh, unless you're really nostalgic for space, you just got to catch them all. Or if you're really just a fan of the UFO theme, then I could see, um, I could see you wanting to hunt this down. Uh, but just as a, a general collector of Lego, I don't know if there's much appeal to this. It doesn't have the same nostalgia as classic space, um, and it doesn't really have all that much going for it, even though it looks amazing. Uh, and that's probably my biggest gripe with it, is that it looks great, it looks really cool, um, but it just it doesn't really have anything to offer outside of this a little light gimmick and uh, some cool printed parts uh, that are kind of highly specialized. Uh, so those are my thoughts on the Interstellar Starfighter. Let me know yours in the comments, and I hope to see you again in another video. Once again, you have been watching Board Games, Bricks, and Hobbies. Take care. Bye.